Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about energy sources, fourth module of engineering chemistry. So, to begin with the definition of fuel, fuel is uh, any substance which produces energy and light on a process called as combustion in the presence of oxygen. So, on burning or on combustion of fuel, we will be getting energy, light and of course some combustion products also. And here this reaction can be considered as oxidation, but not all oxidation reactions are combustion. But all combustion reactions can be considered as oxidation reactions. Coming to the classification of fuels based on origin, fuels are classified into two types. One is primary fuel and secondary fuel. Primary fuels are originated from natural sources and classified into three types based on the physical state. One is solid, liquid and gaseous fuels. Coming to the secondary fuels, secondary fuels are synthesized by using primary fuels. Again, based on the physical state, they are also divided into solid, liquid and gaseous fuels. So example for uh, solid fuels, solid primary fuels, wood, peat, lignite, etc. And uh, example for liquid primary fuels, crude oil or petroleum. And example for gases uh, primary fuels natural gases and examples of secondary solid fuels coke charcoal etc and uh, example for liquid secondary fuels petrol diesel lpg etc and uh, example for gases secondary fuels coal gas or water gas then coming to the comparison or differences between solid liquid and gases fuels the first difference itself the physical state solid liquid and gases fuels and Coming to that uh, solid fuel combustion, which is a very slow process, but easily combustion can be controlled. And liquid fuels, combustion process quick, but it cannot be, the combustion process cannot be controlled. And gases fuels, combustion is rapid relatively and it cannot be controlled easily. And uh, transportation is difficult in case of uh, solid fuels, we need some manpower. And uh, transportation is easier in case of liquid and gaseous fuels. We can make some pipelines through which gases and liquids will be flowing uh, easily. And uh, storage is safe because ignition temperature is very higher and it won't catch fire. So solid fuels can be stored easily and without any risk. And uh, liquid fuels and gaseous fuels, the storage and transportation is also risky because the ignition temperature is very, very low. So it easily catches fire and calorific value of uh, solid fuels is very low because the carbon content of uh, solid fuels is very low and uh, relatively liquid and gaseous fuels are having highest calorific value because the carbon content is increasing from liquid fuels as well as gaseous fuels. Then, so solid fuels causes more pollution because it contains maximum ash content, volatile content and uh, moisture content. So it causes more pollution, whereas liquid fuels, less pollution or least pollution because it contains some less quantity of uh, volatile matter and uh, ash content and uh, moisture content. And uh, gaseous fuels, least pollution or uh, negligible amount of pollution because it contains a negligible amount of volatile matter or uh, moisture content or ash content. And uh, for solid fuels, oxygen requirement is more because ignition temperature is more. So we need to supply more amount of oxygen and uh, for case of liquid fuels, less oxygen is required for combustion process or to initiate the combustion process and uh, gases fuels, least oxygen is required because uh, ignition temperature is very, very less. So easily catches fire. Then, so coming to the application, solid fuels mostly used as a domestic purpose and uh, uh, it cannot be used in fuels, uh, it cannot be used in vehicles, but of course uh, it can be used in some coal engine trains. Okay. Then liquid fuels uh, and gases fuels, the major application of liquid and gases fuels is used as a fuel in automobiles. So these are the comparison between solid, liquid and gases fuels. Next, coming to that uh, characteristics of good fuel. The first uh, quality, it should be easily abundant. And next is the cost should be low then it, it must be easy to transport and easy to store. The next most important thing, it should give high calorific value. To give high calorific value, fuel should have high percentage of carbon. And it should not cause any pollution. And 
इट शुड हैव लो कंटेंट ऑफ नॉन कम्बेसिबल मैटर नॉन कम्बेसिबल मैटर लाइक वोलेटाइल नेचर और एश कंटेंट इट शुड बी वेरी वेरी लो सो दैट लो कंटेंट ऑफ नॉन कम्बेसिबल मैटर विल ऑल्सो बी लो एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन दैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ गुड फील इट शुड हैव मॉडरेट इग्निशन टेम्परेचर इट्स नॉट हैव मॉडरेट इट्स नॉट हैव हाई कैलरी हाई इग्निशन टेम्परेचर or it should not have low ignition temperature as a low ignition temperature easily catches fire which will cause some fire accidents and uh, if the ignition temperature is very higher then uh, to initiate the burning process itself we need to supply more amount of energy we need to supply more amount of oxygen so a good fuel should have moderate ignition temperature so this is the most important point and next it should not produce any poisonous gases and handling should be easy and combustion should be controllable so these are the characteristics of good fuel then coming to calorific value calorific value is defined as a total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of fuel is completely burnt in the presence of oxygen the units are can be 1 kilo calorie or 1000 calories or 3.968 british thermal unit that is btu and 2. 2 centigrade heat unit or centigrade thermal unit so the relation between all these units 1 kilo calorie is equals to 1000 calories is equals to 3.968 british thermal unit is equals to 2.2 centigrade heat unit or centigrade thermal unit and there are two types of calorific values we will consider one is gross calorific value can also be called as high calorific value the next one is uh, net calorific value can also be called as uh, low calorific value then coming to gross calorific value gross calorific value is the amount of heat produced when a unit mass of fuel is completely burnt and the products of combustion are also reused to produce some more heat so this uh, combination of heat produced by unit mass of fuel and uh, uh, next heat produced by the products of combustion is also called as uh, gross calorific value so here to explain gross calorific value we are also considering uh, latent heat of water vapor and uh, coming to low calorific value which is also called as net calorific value so it is uh, amount of heat produced when a unit mass of fuel is completely burnt but the products are let to escape so here in this net calorific value we are not going to consider the products value products are uh, neglected and uh, so this is important high calorific value includes latent heat of water vapor or latent heat of vaporization the standard value is given as 587 87 kcal kcal per kg so here the relation between low calorific value and uh, high calorific value so low calorific value is equals to high calorific value minus latent heat of water vapor form so here we can subtract this latent heat of water vapor from high calorific value to get net calorific value so here so this latent heat of vaporization we are subtract we are going to subtract from high calorific value with hydrogen and water proportionality so this uh, in this formula we have taken hcv minus 9h by 100 into 587 kilo calorie per kg so this 9h is nothing but proportionality between hydrogen and oxygen the mass of hydrogen is here it is 2 and water it is 8 the proportionality between hydrogen and then water it falls 1 is to 9 so generally in any of the fuel hydrogen and oxygen will be in the combined state resulting in the formation of water so which will increase the moisture content so that calorific value decreases so to consider this net calorific value so we are considering only hydrogen which is the only desirable uh, element whereas oxygen is undesirable element so we can remove this uh, oxygen uh, content from water content so by a proportionality of 1 is to 9 so here we are taking hcv minus 9h by 100 into 587 kilo calorie per kg or else hcv minus 0.09h into 587 kilo calorie per kg then to calculate gross calorific value dulong has proposed one formula which is 1 by 100 into 8080 kilo calories per kg due to carbon plus 34500 kilo calorie per kg due to hydrogen 
whereas uh, percentage of oxygen should be removed plus 2240 kilocalorie per kg due to sulfur so all these c h o and s are nothing but percentage of carbon hydrogen oxygen and sulfur so this 8080 is nothing but calorific value produced by unit quantity or unit percentage of carbon and uh, 34500 kilocalorie per kg is a calorific value produced by unit percentage of hydrogen from which we have to remove percentage of oxygen and uh, 2240 kilocalorie per kg is the calorific value produced by sulfur so here why this 8 is taken so that 8 is nothing but the proportionality between hydrogen and uh, oxygen so here the proportionality between hydrogen and oxygen is if we can say the mass of hydrogen is 2 and mass of oxygen is 16 so the proportionality between hydrogen and oxygen is 1 is to 8 so finally dulong formula is gross calorific value is equals to 1 by 100 into 8080 kilocalories due to carbon plus 34500 into percentage of hydrogen minus percentage of oxygen plus 22 Uh, 140 kilocalories per kg due to sulfur this is a calorific gross calorific value so in this video we have covered the definitions of fuel and the classification of fuels and of course we have covered the calorific value and different calorific values gross calorific value and net calorific value and we have also discussed dulong form thank you